Uh, with this presentation, I'll give you an overview of cost codes. Uh, if we go to Setup and then Cost Codes, <coughs> you'll see the cost code form here. Now, the major thing to remember about cost codes is that the cost code determines on what purchase order any item in the price list is printed. Now, no item in the price list can exist without a cost code on it, and the cost code must first exist in the cost code table here before it can be used on uh, an item in the price list. A very good PDF document explaining this in detail can be found uh, if you click on About Cost Codes. Now I'll just zoom in on this a bit closer so you can read it a bit more clearly. But if you look at this, it gives you very, very good uh, detailed information about cost codes. I won't bore you by reading it to you. You can print this out and read it yourself. Suffice to say that any code that ends in 00, zero is a primary code, any that ends in a 0 but not 00, zero is a secondly, secondary code, and all others are tertiary codes. You cannot create tertiary code 1.11 until you have first created 1.00 and then 1.10. So primary, heading code, secondary, subheading code, cost code. There's very good information on here. Um, you can have up to 80,919 80, codes, but believe me, you don't want to get in that deeply into them. You'll see here on the code groups, these are the primary codes basically, uh, ones with a P on here. I've labelled these basically in the way in which you build primary, uh, preliminaries, excavation, reinforcing, concrete work, brickwork and so forth. So you can dissect all of your um, purchase orders based on how you would purchase the items uh, that are generated on the purchase order based on their code. The user has absolute control over what code is put on any item within a price list, so therefore the user has absolute control of what appears, uh, what items appear on what purchase order. Uh, when purchase orders are generated, the selection criteria or the hierarchical um, construction of purchase orders is firstly, what job did they belong to, the job ID, secondly, what um, supplier if there's a nominated supplier and then the code so if you have several items in the price list that have the same uh, tertiary code on it but have different nominated suppliers then you will get two separate purchase orders based on the job who the supplier is and what code it belongs to uh, further down here you'll see they're the primary codes as I say basically on the uh, in the order you would normally build uh, a bit further down when we get to the um, to the code list, you'll see here um, preliminaries 1.00 preliminaries, which is a heading. Engineering is a subheading of preliminaries. Fees and charges are subheading of pl of preliminaries, and these are the codes, per tertiary codes, relating to each of the secondary codes. So print that out, read it from beginning to end, which will give you a huge understanding of uh, cost codes. If you want to, before you do any um, estimating or create any purchase orders, you can globally renumber these codes. So if I want to move uh, code number one, which is the one I'm on, or if I want to move this one here, metal worker, I want to move that, say, to code 100. I'll just put 100 and say select and yes. And now, if I go down to the end down here, you'll see all of those codes have been moved to 100. So there is one method. Um, this button changes the cost codes in the cost code table. This button here, move the code numbers, moves the selected code which is stamped on any item in the price list and moves it to a different code. In other words, if you've got 20 items in the price list that have cost code 14.31 attributed to them, you can put in a new code, it will find each of the items in the price list that have that code and replace it with the new one. Neither of these buttons um, work uh, 
if you have got purchase orders generated. So cost codes is something you should sort out firstly, or if you've already got purchase orders started uh, and uh, estimates started, you can always delete the estimates and the purchase orders and that then will open up the ability for you to change these codes. So um, I hope that gives a little bit of an understanding of uh, what cost codes do. You'll notice six is not here anymore. If I come down here now, and I'll say I want to move 100 back to 6. I can proceed and change that, yes, and it moves it back to 6 and 100 no longer exists. Now, how do you create code? So if I want to create code group 100, I would put, if I say I want to create code 100.11, for example, and say add the new code, I get the message that says you can't create that without having secondary code. And if I simply say, oh, well, create that secondary code, you say you can't do it until you create the primary code. So the way you do it is you create the primary code, code 100. This is whatever you want to name these quite clearly. And we'll say add a new code. We want 100.10, add the new code say 100.10 add a new code 100.11 and 100.11 the names or the descriptions would be what you select them to be I can now add 100.12 add the new code and so on and so on and so on so um I hope that gives you an understanding of how cost codes work. Uh, you should have a description on here for each of the codes uh, that you want. Oh, big pardon, 100.12, uh, and so on and so on and so on. <coughs> now, you'll notice that these things, some of these are not ticked, is because secondary codes are not really selectable, um, and some of these codes are not active. If I click on view active codes, then I only see the codes in this list that are actually attributed to items within the price list. So um, you can view all of them. You can view the primary codes on their own. You can view the secondary codes on their own. You can pr uh, view all of the tertiary codes. Those are active and those are not active. And you can make them active to suit yourself. No, you can't do that actually. Um, they become active when you use them on, on items within the price list. It's to filter down on this list here so you only see the ones that are active. So there you go. There's some codes. If you want to find something by its name, you'll see here long service leave. If you can't see it on the screen, click on L. It'll put them all in alphabetical order, starting at the first uh, description that starts with L. So I hope that... Um, gives you an un understanding of all of this and if I sit, click on reset it'll reset all those codes and um, so that gives you an understanding of it um, you can print code lists you can print a primary code list once you've set them up or you can print um, the cost code list which is this list here and the list when it's printed will represent what you have set up yourself I hope that's of uh, uh, use to you and gives you a better understanding of how cost codes work. That's the end of this